Hey everyone, and welcome to Doha, Qatar. While on my way back from India last November, I had a 20 hour layover here, so I decided to venture outside of the airport and explore this vibrant city. Since I was flying with Qatar Airways, I was able to take advantage of their stopover program, which allows you to enjoy a number of cultural experiences and stay at four and five star hotels for very reasonable prices. This is a really cool program and I definitely recommend taking advantage of it. I enjoyed my time in Doha, but I'm not gonna lie, I was even more excited to be flying with Qatar in their legendary Q-Suite again. Qatar Airways has a dedicated check-in area for premium passengers that allows you to breeze right through to the main airport. Doha Hamad is a stunning airport, but my first priority was to head to the business class lounge so I could pretend to be rich for as long as possible. This lounge is massive and has practically everything you could ever hope for, including a beautiful chandelier and a pretty cool reflecting pool. There's several dining options, including a large buffet up on the second floor. The lounge was busy, but I was still able to find a seat and relax before it was time to head to the gate. If you watched my last Q-Suite review, then you'll know that I flew to Qatar aboard the 777ER, but for tonight's flight back to New York, I'll be traveling aboard the Airbus A350-900. For tonight's flight, I'll be sitting in a middle seat. As you probably already know, the partitions between the four seats facing each other in the center can be lowered so you can in effect form one large Q-Suite. This is a great feature for families or friends traveling together, but I never actually saw anyone set this up on my two flights with the Q-Suite. Pretty soon the cabin was prepped for departure and it was time for us to head to New York. I was definitely disappointed that I wasn't able to secure a window seat for this flight, but not having overhead bins really gives this middle seat a much more airy feel. After a smooth takeoff, it was time to settle in. Qatar offers a fantastic assortment of amenities, and I covered this in greater detail in my last Q-Suite review, so you can check out that video if you want a better overview. The sense of privacy that the Q-Suite provides is excellent, and since I was traveling with family, having the ability to adjust the center partition was really nice. These middle seats have plenty of storage space, and this adjustable armrest even opens up so you can place larger items inside. Controlling the 22 inch wide IFE screen is a breeze with the remote, but it's also touch screen if you prefer to scroll that way. Qatar offers an excellent variety of movies and TV shows. It's almost impossible to not find something to keep you entertained on a long haul flight like this. One thing that I definitely preferred about Qatar's A350 over their 777 was the in-flight map. The map on this plane was fully interactive, as opposed to the 777 which was just more of a slideshow. This plane was equipped with Wi-Fi and business class passengers received one hour for free. Soon after takeoff, I decided to visit one of the three business class lavatories on this A350 so I could get changed into my pajamas. The lavatories were beautifully decorated and stocked with a great selection of toiletries. Business class passengers can dine on demand, and since I ate so much in the lounge before this flight, I decided to have a light dinner.
I thought the soup that I ordered was delicious. And once the flight attendants cleared it all away, they gave me a box of Godiva. I decided to have dinner early on in the flight, so I could sit back, relax, and enjoy the IFE system for as long as possible. There's a lot of commercials before you start a new program on the IFE system, but thankfully you can fast forward through them all. As we were getting closer to the US, I decided to order breakfast. Qatar really excels with their dining experience. The presentation is wonderful, and the food is always delicious. The sausage and eggs that I ordered were perfectly cooked, and watching this footage again is making me kinda hungry. This was my first time flying on an A350, and it was a great experience. There were some drawbacks to this seat though. The seats in the center got a little hot because there were no individual air nozzles. Also, seats like mine that form into a four-seat pod aren't the best if you don't know the person sitting across from you because you tend to make awkward eye contact every time one of you stands up, and in my case, the guy across from me was pretty obnoxious. I'd also like to give a lot of credit to the crew who were wonderful on this flight. The cabin manager checked in on me several times and seemed legitimately concerned over whether or not I was enjoying myself. The flight attendants were also very attentive and actually greeted me by name every time I saw them. The service on this flight just may have been the best I've ever experienced. Sadly though, this flight had to come to an end eventually. So I strapped on my seatbelt and reluctantly prepared for landing. But now that I've flown on both Qatar's 777 and A350, which is better? I know I'm probably going to set off a firestorm in the comments section, but I really didn't feel there were any major differences. So rest assured that if you book a flight in the Q-Suite, you're going to have a very nice flight on either aircraft. This is just my impression from flying business class though. I'm sure the economy experience is completely different between these two planes. I was sad when this flight came to an end, but right now my heart hurts even more seeing that 747 on the left hand side of the screen. Skytrax awarded Qatar Airways with the world's best business class in 2019, and while I don't think too highly of Skytrax, they were definitely spot on here. Qatar Airways has succeeded in delivering a first class experience in business class with the Q-Suite. And that's a wrap for this video. Thanks for watching, and take care everyone.